Well, hello and salutations. Well, welcome to my channel. I've been seeing a lot of videos saying, what if Alistair was a fallen angel? And I thought I would want to uh, throw in my two cents in this ring. Um, a lot of people are speculating that maybe he is the Archangel Michael that has fallen. And to me personally, I, I don't think it's Michael. I think Michael will show up sometime later in later seasons, and he's going to be the one that rivals Lucifer. And we'll deep dive into that lore a little bit later. I was watching Dogma again recently. I love that movie. And it brought my attention to a couple of fallen angels. And the first two are right here, Bartleby and Loki, two fallen angels that have been cast out of heaven to live their eternity on earth. But unfortunately, these two aren't actually in the Bible. They are fictional characters. But there is one more character that is in Dogma that is a biblical figure. And I think that fits Alistor a little bit more to the T if he were a fallen angel. This guy right here. I am the Metatron. Yep, that's right, the Metatron. And I know what you're thinking. Who is this? Well, let's go down just a little bit deeper. Don't tell me the name doesn't ring a bell. I am a seraphim. The highest choir of angels. <sighs> Metatron acts as the voice of God. Any documented occasion when some Yahoo claims that God has spoken to them, they're speaking to me. So this right here makes me feel that if Alistair was a fallen angel, he would be the voice of God. He speaks to the people in God's place. So therefore, he's very used to speaking and being very profound with his words and like basically would probably like hearing him own, his own self speak in a ways. Why doesn't God speak for himself? Glad you decided to join the conversation. To answer that, human beings have neither the oral nor the psychological capacity to withstand the awesome power of God's true voice. Were you to hear it, your mind would cave in and your heart would explode within your chest. We went through five atoms before we figured that one. So here he's explaining that he is the voice of God because no mortal can withstand the awesome power of God's voice. If they were to hear God's true voice, they would die and that they went through five atoms before they figured that out. So when God was creating the Garden of Eden, God kept speaking to Adam and they kept dying and they finally realized that God cannot speak to mortals. So therefore, the highest choir of angels, a seraphim, the Metatron was put in place to speak on God's behalf. So that gets me the inkling feeling that someone that's been speaking to people for a very long time and naturally good at it, that why not a Metatron fall after so many centuries and years of speaking to humans, maybe eventually he just snapped and no longer wanted to help people like say clean sin but become sin so when you deep dive into the metatron in depending on what religion you're looking at and what figure he's either the right hand of god or the third seat of god it's either he is right beside god's side or michael is right beside god's side He's a very strong individual. But being that strong individual, his power resides on the good of man. The more good that's going on Earth, the stronger the Metatron is. And then in some aspects of the lore is that as well as humans are doing good, he is stronger. But at the same time, he can also draw power from the dark side of sin as a angel of death. So what if he decided instead of choosing balance between good and evil and being the strong voice of God, he was tired of, let's say, the sinners. So he went down to earth and just started hacking away at sinners to increase the goodwill of men. And let's say he got a liking for it and he just wanted to do more so then he started yielding more towards the angel of death side and let's say he wanted to stay on earth because he enjoyed what he was doing so let's say 
he wanted to make a deal to get out of his angelic duties and just thrive on this one side of power. So it got me thinking to this one scene right here at the last episode ending song where he's saying, there must be a backdoor to my deal and once my wings are unclipped, he will be the one pulling the strings. So let's say if he were an angel and he made a deal to be mortal on earth, but still retained that power for taking out sinners and being the angel of death, he's missing half his power, the balance between his good and evil, which makes him so strong. This rabbit hole can go far and can go deep. Um, the amount of different religions, the amount of uh, different roles, and the amount of different styles the Metatron has goes far and wide. Uh, primarily is I was just taking pieces from almost all the religions that makes it feel as if he could be a Metatron. And primarily from the Jewish book of lore is that the Metatron is also an angel of death, one that walks both the heavens and the earth. And when we go through this scene right here where Alistor is fighting Adam, to me, it feels like Alistor wasn't actually trying to hurt or kill Adam because the majority of it, he's just dodging, weaving, and moving around and not fully taking it seriously, but it's like more or less as a delay. Maybe he was waiting for Lucifer to show up to take him out. But I feel that if Alistor actually had angelic weapons, he could have got a death blow multiple, multiple times in that fight with ease against Adam. But that's just my perspective on the fight, looking at it from an outside view more openly. So in closing, uh, while looking up all this and the pages on pages on pages of history of the Metatron in all the different religion aspects, this rabbit hole goes deep. It goes to the bars. It's looked at as a higher being. It's looked at as a cruel being. It's looked at as the heaven walker and earth walker. Just multiple different variations of what this one angel can do. And I was quite surprised on, on how much lore there is to it in the way it's de depicted upon different countries across the world as well. But thank you very much for listening to my rambles on this. And we're going to bring this to a close here. And if you made it this far, thank you very much. These are just thoughts in my head and rambles that I got. I'm just trying to get the information and put it out. I do stream and uh, it's just where I just hang out and I chill and just play games that I feel like playing. And if you want to tell me your theories, you can always join me on my live. And it's usually around 8 p.m. Pacific time until I get tired. Until next time, I'll see you later.